will be singing All Hail the Power of Jesus Name. All Hail the Power of Jesus Name. Neil. Let's pray. Our most gracious and kind Heavenly Father, Happy Midweek, O Lord. We praise you, Lord, for the wonderful day you have given us. We thank you, Lord, for being so merciful to each one of your children, O Lord. Lord, thank you very much for taking care of us until this very day of the week, O Lord. And Lord, as we worship you this midweek service, O Lord, may you bless us, may you prepare our hearts and minds to receive you, to receive your word. Please, Lord, pour us the double portion of your Holy Spirit so that we may be able to discern the things you want us to understand and discover about you. Forgive us, Lord, from the countless sins we have committed against thee. In Christ's holy name we pray, amen. Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to our prayer meeting. Also, for our viewers on live streams, happy midweek. Tonight, let us praise God and thank Him for we have this opportunity to gather. In some places around the world, it's so sad because they are not able to gather, so they just worship on their own homes. But despite of all of these things, God is still good. So by that, let us read a passage on the Bible that can be found in John 14, verse 27. You can read with me, John 14, verse 27. It says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Tonight, um, let's cast our burdens on him and be 
and have peace with Him. God bless us all.
Good evening, everyone. Happy midweek. I'm so glad to see you here. Even though we're experiencing a crisis, but we praise God for Him being so faithful. <laughs> so, here tonight, we'll be hearing five people who have experienced God's faithfulness during the week of revival and even after it. Even through the discipleship training, trainings that we had. And so, may you kindly introduce your first, uh, may you kindly introduce yourself first. Adam. I'm Dan Mar Polancos. I'm taking AB Theology, third year college. So, happy midweek everyone. My name is Marvelisa Bigaran. 19 CO, COB. Good evening, everyone. Happy midweek. My name is Christer Caleb Giao. I'm from College of Health, 20 years old. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. My name is Nkwiza Nseja Nankolongo. I am 21 years old from College of Science and Technology. Happy Merrick, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, my name is Brent Ligsai, and I am a student of Adventist University of Philippines Academy and Grade 11. So, yeah. Thank you. I would like to thank God for you accepting the call to be with us tonight. And so before we start, let's first pray. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we would like to thank you for this evening and thank you for being so faithful, for giving us the protection that we need and blessing us with the bountiful blessings. And as we start, we ask for the Holy Spirit to orchestrate this talk that we will have. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So, for first question, I'll ask... And Quiza and Caleb, how did God use the week of revival and the discipleship trainings to change you as a follower of Jesus Christ? Uh, as a follower of Christ, uh, when we had our first session Monday morning, uh, Pastor Don asked us 10 questions, right? If you can remember. And then... All of, almost all of my answers are no. And I said to myself that there is still lacking in me. Uh, I realized that I joined canvassing, I joined Voice of Youth, but then still my spiritual life is not in the peak where I want it to be. But, but this week of revival, God... Um, made me realize that I need him more, I need to pray, I need to read the Bible more, because sometimes, uh, because that is the only way wherein I can uh, strengthen my relationship with him. And uh, right now, that is what is inspiring me to share more of him, because he made me realize in my imperfectness, his perfectness. And Pisa? So, for me, this week, the past week of revival reminded me that as a follower of Christ, I have to be dependent on Him. I have to surrender every day and I have to grow. I was also reminded that every individual is worthy to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And lastly, I was reminded that when I am praying, it is not always that I have to talk. I have to be the one talking. Sometimes it is necessary to also just listen. Thank you. So now the next question is, how did God inspire you to share about Jesus to others? Can we have our youngest participant? So God impressed me. I mean, the Holy Spirit, He impressed me to share about Jesus by 
uh, telling me in a still small voice and also trying to burn my heart, not literally burn, but to overflow me with the power of the Spirit. He said, go, tell this to your friends, whoever uh, who are in discouragement or whoever needs help, go and pray for them. So it really inspires me and also praying for them makes me really happy. So yeah. Thank you. And so you also want to share, Kuya Denmark? Uh, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 8, in the last praise, uh, Jesus said, Freely you, you have received, freely give. Uh, we receive the salvation of God. Uh, it, is, it is free so that for me, I need to share the I need to share the the salvation for others so to pray for them. So indeed that all of us were reminded that we should not just keep the truth in ourselves, but we should share it to others. And you know that God said to us that let your light shine. And do not hide that lamp that you have. Because there's a lot of us, even you know, I know that almost every one of us, every one of us have experienced the darkest part of this world, the darkest experiences. And so others, also others need the light that we receive. Why don't we share it to others too? And let that line shine forth into all the world. And so for our third question, can uh, I'll ask everyone to share. So what did God impresses you to do with the truth that you have learned? What did God impresses you to do with the truth that you have learned? Um, for me, God impressed me through, by the Holy Spirit. That in Matthew 28 verse 19, if you have your Bibles with you, it's emphasized in, emphasize there that go ye people and make disciples. So during our week revival, God impressed me and it motivates me to pass it on of what we learned during our revival. For those people that doesn't know yet God, for those who are hopeless, and to make disciples with my friends, roommates, and families, that's all. Thank you, Marvs. So how about Caleb? Uh, for me, uh, God impresses me with the same verse that my sister quoted, what is written in Matthew chapter 28, verse says 19 to 20. It says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even in the end of the age. Sometimes I think to myself, Lord, I'm not perfect. I am unworthy to share what, what is the truth because I'm a sinner. People may judge me that, why are you sharing that? You're a sinner. But looking onto the, the life of the people whom God have chosen in the Bible, they were also imperfect. But that is what made them qualified because of their brokenness that is where God was lifted up. And it inspires me to share also to others because what I am experiencing might be a blessing to others as well. I remember the testimony, uh, the experience that I have with Pastor Don because last time I was stressed with so many things that I have to cope up. But then I just wanted to go to Centennial Park so that I will have peace in my mind. And then Pastor Don prayed for me. And then I said, it's really nice that someone lights you up. I'm like a candle worn out, but then Pastor, gave, through the help of the Holy Spirit, gave light to me again. And I just want to be a light also to others. That's all. Thank you, Caleb. How about Enquisa? Okay, so I was impressed by the Holy Spirit in different ways. Firstly, before I proceed, I would like to read from John chapter 7, verse 
38, which says, He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Now, I'd just like to point out something very important here. The last two words, living water. When we try to describe, when we try to describe what living water is, as a science major, biology major, I have come to understand that living water is water that passes on life. It is not dead. As it flows, it distributes different uh, nutrients and different things that different organisms need. It does not, it's not just water, plain water. It contains also other micro, living microorganisms in it. So it is able to support life. And so as we were filled with the Holy Spirit, or rather the Word of God, it was like we were filled with the living water. So as living water, we should let our lives flow and pass on life to different people that we interact with. Amen. I remember from what you have said, I remember the story of the woman at the well. Uh, that the joy that she received from Jesus Christ, and she also shared it to others. She did not keep it, but she shared the living water to others. Isn't it amazing? So now, uh, I will ask Kuya Danmar. How about you, Kuya Danmar? Uh, for me, uh, God impresses me to become more humble to Him, uh, to share the Word of God, and to live uh, the truth for our lives. Maybe uh, I just decided that because uh, because my family is not uh, do, uh, going to church now because some others, they are backsliding. But, uh, but my, the impression that God given me uh, this night that maybe after this uh, calamity, uh, this uh, COVID-19, maybe I pray to the Lord that uh, He will give me strength so that I can share it to my family. And even for my for the neighbors, because there's a lot of Muslims in my <laughs> in my home. So maybe if the Lord uh, guides me and gives me strength, I can able to share it to them. Yes, indeed, we should not forget our first mission field, which is our family. So. I challenge you, everyone, to also share the lessons that you have learned, the love of Christ to your family. God gives us the courage. God gives us the strength. And God has given us the word. Don't be afraid to share it. Now, can we... How about Brent? Can you For the third question, what did God impress you to do with the truth that you have learned? The truth that I have learned actually... It made me know more about him through this week of revival. It really made me think of myself that, oh, I really need to learn more about God. I still need a lot more to learn about God because there was this feeling of thinking that I had that, oh, I'm enough to know more about God. So I'll just stop here until this limit. But because of this week of revival, it opened my mind again that I really need to know more about God. Thank God for those testimonies that you shared. And so, the Lord is really amazing. As part of AUP for almost seven years, and being part of the prayer ministry, it's been a dream for us to see a revival in this campus. We've been praying for it for how many years? And I know how glad my friends, the alumni, especially the prayer, prayer, the prayer coordinators before, those who are active in the prayer ministry, I know that they are so happy to see, to know that indeed revival is happening here in the campus. Yeah. And I really thank God for giving me the, un the opportunity to witness the unfolding of this revival. And I believe that the Lord has more and more to unfold for us. We just have to believe. We just have to allow Him 
to work in us and to work through us. And so we thank God for Pastor Rex being here. And yeah, so you want to share, Pastor Rex? Well, um, what, I, what I just want to share with you is that I'm really happy that God brought revival here in the campus to us. And uh, we've been praying that it will not end in the week of prayer as we used, we used to call it. But we will continue, right? And we're really happy that God sent his servant, uh, Pastor Don, to us to like uh, ignite the fire or make a spark. But as he, he told me before, um, we are just starting to spark the, the fire. We're not yet uh, a burning bush or a bush fire. But we are again very happy that Pastor Don was, he, was here with us. If, for example, just for example, Pastor Don is here, what, what do you think? Would you like to see him again tonight? Amen. So I'd like to invite Pastor Don to be here with us. <laughs> Welcome, Pastor Don. Welcome back to AUP. <laughs> we are happy that Pastor Don is here with us. He might share with us uh, the story why he's not an apparition. He is here in person, but he will share with us the story. He, he's going to tell us when will he, he say the story. But Pastor Don is God's messenger. Uh, his purpose of coming here is for us to be revived. And uh, our focus is to, is to be towards Jesus, to have a closer relationship with Jesus. And uh, Pastor, we'd like to give you the time so that you can inspire again our young people that are here. And also our uh, students and even the faculty and staff who are joining us in worship this evening through our Facebook live stream. Thank you, Pastor. Good evening to all of you. It's good to see you right here on this campus again. I thought that right now I would be in the snowy, the deep, deep snowy land of Canada. And do you have time for a story? Uh, let me tell you an interesting story that I hope you will not forget and I hope I never forget. And to those of you who are joining us uh, live stream, Jesus is coming again. Jesus has promised us the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is doing things fast. And he also is up to many surprises, as I can testify. <laughs> and he wants us to be surrendered to Jesus Christ. And so I want to just sit here and just tell you a story, a simple, simple story. And I want you to think, I invite you to think, about what's going on between you and Jesus Christ right now. Like what are you facing? What decisions are you making? Because this has just happened. Last night, a friend of mine dropped me off at the airport. As you knew, I had a, a flight. I was praying all the way to drop me off. I found it strange that the airport was so empty. And I, I, I say, where can I go into my line for Cathay Pacific? That was where I was going to fly from Manila to Hong Kong, Hong Kong to Vancouver, the western part of Canada, and then one more to Calgary. And then my wife would pick me up. And that was the plan, I thought. So I go up to the desk and the counter, and they say, sir, please put your luggage up here. And I said, can I take this luggage? Oh, no problem. Show us your ticket and your passport. I give my ticket and my passport. They look at my ticket. And he said, uh, sir? I said, yes. This will not work tonight. You cannot go on this flight. Why can I go on this flight? I just bought this ticket just hours ago. They said, this is obsolete. Hong Kong is now uh, declared that there can be no international transits through Hong Kong. Your ticket is going from Manila to Hong Kong. If you're already in Hong Kong, then you could go on to Canada. But you're not. You're starting out in the Philippines. You cannot use this ticket. I said, what am I supposed to do? 
But he said, I do not know. I said, when's the next time I can go? Maybe June. I said, hmm, that's quite a while. <laughs> and uh, I said, can you give me any other ideas? And he said, well, you can check this flight, this flight. And so I had to call the man that took me to, to the airport was already back home, you know, right in this area. And so he turned, as soon as he got home, he had to turn around and come all the way back. I am praying, 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 and my mind is just so confused. God, what are you up to? You allowed us to buy the ticket, but why could I not go? I want to ask you, how many of you in the audience tonight, both online and here, how many of you have had a time even recently where you think you know what God wants to do next, but you really don't know? How many of you have had that happen recently? Whoa, okay, okay. so you understand what I'm talking about, right? So I get my ride, and I get back, and... Uh, they let me into the gate, and I've got my mask and everything, and I've did, I was very, very, very careful. And I, I come back, and I go back to the exact room that I just cleared out a few hours earlier. I said, this room really looks familiar. Yeah, it looks familiar. <laughs> and within a couple of hours, I got another flight. And it was for tonight. And so uh, all through last night when you were sleeping, I was working on the next flight. And people found it in Canada. They said, we, we can get you there. You can go right to LAX and you'll be fine. So I wake up in this morning and I tell my wife, I said, I know you're thinking I'm almost there. I'm not. I'm still at AUP. She said, AUP? I said, yes, I'm at AUP on the campus. But I said, I have another flight, I think. What I'm about to tell you next is very, very serious. And for those of you who are in the valley of decision, trying to figure out what God is or isn't doing in your life, this is for you and for those of you watching too. Many of you students have major decisions, right? Big things on your hearts. And how do we know the will of God? So I'm gonna tell you the story just as it happened. And uh, it's only to impress you with Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is what happened. So. This morning, I wake up, didn't have a very good sleep, of course, uh, heavy on my heart just to understand what God wanted to do. And I woke up and I said, God, I said that you woke me up. And I said, so I'm up. And so what do you think I did first thing when I got up? Surrender. The students, those of you are watching, they said surrender. Yes, I surrendered to Jesus. And if I wouldn't have surrendered to Jesus, this story would not have happened. I'm going to just tell you that straight away. So I'm glad he reminded me to surrender. I got on my knees and I said, Jesus, you're the Lord of my life. And may you lead me to your agenda. I'm still confused about how every time I get a flight home, it gets canceled. And so please help me know your will. So I, I pray and I say, God, what do you want me to read in the word this morning? And I'm seeking him and asking him and and I hear nothing. And I ask him some more, and pretty soon I start thinking, well, I start making suggestions to God. Again, do you ever make suggestions? God, I could read this, I could read this, I could read this, and it all had to do with things about what I would love to prepare to share with you as my new friends here on campus. And the Spirit of God said, Don, that's not the way you usually spend time with Jesus, is preparing. I said, no, that's true, I don't, I don't. My time with Jesus is just for me. How many of you need time with Jesus just for you? Like just for you, not to prepare something, but just for you. Amen? So I said, so what's on your heart? And again, he took me back to Acts 16. Those of you who are here yesterday morning at 6.30, you know what that's about. It's about those of you who are online. Uh, if you want to go there right now, go to Acts 16. Uh, and you'll have to tell me what you're showing me because I don't have my glasses. No, my glasses are in Canada. So. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, tomorrow morning, by the way, before we say anything more, 6.30 a.m., we're going to be at the amphitheater by the College of Dentistry. Did I say that right, Pastor? So uh, we invite all of you to be there, and I hope to see you for a major, major reason. 6.30 in the morning by the amphitheater by the College of Dentistry. So if, you're, if you have your Bibles, go to Acts 16 again. Those of you who were with me yesterday morning, you know what it says. We won't read the whole thing. We'll just look at it very, very briefly. In Acts chapter 16, we have this unusual story. The apostle Paul 
is you can tell he's so passionate about Jesus that he has a plan of where he wants to go. So Acts 16. And he wants to go, look at, at verse, look at verse 6. They passed through the Phrygian and Galatian region, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. And after that, they came to Mysia. They were trying to go into Bithynia, and the Spirit of Jesus did not permit them. And passing by Mysia, they came down to Troas. You see what was happening? Paul wanted to go somewhere, and the Holy Spirit said no. And the Holy Spirit said don't speak the first time. And when Paul kept on going the next place, the Holy Spirit even got stronger. And the next time, he said don't even go there. The first time he said zip, don't talk there, even in the name of Jesus. The next place he said don't even go there. My friends, we need to be careful when the Spirit of God says reroute, another plan, and we need to not be afraid. And you know that when Paul obeyed, that it looks like either that night or the next night, look what happened in verse 9. A vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing and appealed to him, saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. So I'm reading that this morning, and, uh, and you had no idea, but I'm only just a few hundred feet away from where you are this morning. And I'm praying, God, you're showing me this again. What do you want me to do? And I said, I'm asking in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to show you five steps of knowing God's will. Some of you have heard this. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, keep Satan from confusing me or distracting me. Because Jesus has all authority. Matthew 28, verse 18. Number two, I said, I surrender again to the lordship of Jesus. You have all authority. I don't. Number three, I said, I'm asking in Jesus' name, give me the wisdom you promised in James 1. Verses 5 through 8. As soon as they said, give me the wisdom of what to do in this situation. What's happening? Why can't I leave Philippines? The still small voice of God said, I already gave you wisdom. Do you ever ask for wisdom and God already gave it to you? And you keep asking? I said, so why are you saying that? And the still small voice of God said, cry out to me with Jeremiah 33, 3. So I said, I quoted it back to him. He says, call to me and I will answer you. And I'll tell you great and mighty things you don't know. Students, faculty, staff, viewers, call out to God with the promise of Jeremiah 33, 3. When you don't know what God's up to, call out to him with expectation that he will answer. I'm on my knees and that still small voice of God said, Don, the ticket that you have right now to try the fourth time to leave this campus, call him up and cancel it right now. Number one. Number two, he said, cease trying to leave this campus until my spirit tells your wife and you both that the work that I called you to do on this campus and for the Cavite mission and this area in Philippines is accomplished. Serious thing. Then he said, Donna, I put on your heart to come to this campus to call for revival. And he said, my spirit has begun a special work among the students, the faculty, the staff here, but it is not done by any means. Amen? He said, you cannot leave because what I called you to do here is not done. He also talked to me about you students, how he's raising you up for such a time as this. And he, and he impressed me, come alongside of you as students and, and, and put my shoulder beside you to equip you more about how to reach this entire campus for the Lord Jesus Christ and then to equip you and to send you out while there's still time to get this old world ready for Jesus to come. And I said, so, so God, what else? I said, how long? He said, that's not your business. He said, when it's time for you to go, it may be sooner than you're expecting or later. He said, I'll tell both your wife in Canada and you, both of you, and, he, and I'll say, it's time. So I am here not because, actually, that I have a canceled flight. That was true for last night, but I already had another flight. And it looked like this flight actually would have gone through tonight. 
I'm not here because I can't be anywhere else. I'm not here because I'm stuck here. I'm here because I'm called here. And I'm here to see what God will do among us in the end of time. Also, the Cavite mission which surrounds this campus is ripe for the kingdom of God. The pastors, the church planters are ready to see God move. I want to invite you to do something very, very bold tonight. Very, very bold. Because I will tell you, God has not sent me back here to just be a comfortable voice. Do you understand? Never has God shut the door on me traveling back home, never in my mission experience of all my life, except for right here at AUP. So I take this as a holy call. I want to invite you truly, when you go back to your dorms, we have 14 dorms here, is this right? 14? Am I saying the number right? Okay. Everybody that's in a dorm, I want to invite you to work together and bring a list of every name of every student that's in your particular dorm. Put it on a sheet and put the name of your dorm on the top. And bring it at 6.30 because we're going to cry out to God that what he began last week, he will add fire, fire, fire to what he did last week and go way, way beyond. I want to know, students, will you do that? Will you get the name of everyone? We're actually going to lift up the name of every student to Jesus Christ tomorrow. And so we don't just need a few people doing it. We need a lot. I'm also praying that God will raise up champions, at least two champions for every dormitory. And tomorrow we can come before God and say, how can we organize ourselves over the next seven days so that we can go to every home on this campus of every faculty and every staff and just say, I'm here to pray for the blessings of God in the end of time, that everyone in your home, it will be blessed and ready for Jesus to come. Faculty and staff that are here tonight, I hope you'll join us in this, and the students, amen, in this work. Students, I'm praying that you would go out in the morning, come at 6.30, but in the, and then do your schoolwork, doing your work during the day, but in the night, we'll not meet together. We will go out into the dormitories. We'll go out into the homes just to pray with God's people. After seven days of prayer, intensive prayer, prayer ministry to the people here, if you students agree with this in the morning. If you don't, then we'll, we'll ask God again. But then we will see what God wants to do on this campus to be a voice to this nation. If you are moved in your heart to be a part of such a venture for the end of time, then I invite you to come and join me right here and join me on my knees. If you are moved in your heart that the Spirit of God wants you to be a part of such a bold venture, come and join me right up here. Just come on your knees. <clears throat> I would like to ask for two students, uh, one girl on my right and one boy on my left that would pray along with me if they would pray first and then I'll have the closing prayer. We really, really need the Spirit of God to work. So if I can have two students, one here on my right, one on the left, that would be wonderful. Thank you. If we can have a young lady come over here. Thank you so much. Let's humble ourselves before God. Viewers, I want to invite you, if you are watching in the home, students, if you're watching from your dormitory, I invite you in Jesus' name to get on your knees. This is not a normal time in Earth's history. This is the end of time. We are not time setters. We don't know how long this era will be. It could be weeks, it could be months, it could be years ahead, it could be. But we know the world is falling apart and now is the time to be bold for Jesus Christ. This we know. I invite you right where you are, listening audience, viewers, to get on your knees. Those of you who are here at AUP that uh, are in the pews, I invite you, if you would like, it's up to you, you can join us on your knees right where you are. And let's ask God right now for him to do a mighty work. If you would pray first, and then uh, Brent, and then I'll, I'll pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Our most powerful, gracious, merciful, and faithful Father up above, Lord, we praise you for being such a great father to each one of us. We praise you, Lord, for being so faithful to your promises to each one of us. 
We praise you, Lord, because you are the Father everyone needs in these end times, O oh Lord. Lord, in a special way, you have seen all your people here, the people via live stream, Lord, in their homes, kneeling before you, O oh Lord, asking for your blessing, asking for your wisdom, which is be coming from heaven. Lord, enlighten us. Enlighten us what to do in these end times, O oh Lord. How can we contribute in the, in the message, in the ministry that you want us to do, O oh Lord? Lord, touch our hearts. Pour us the double portion of your Holy Spirit that we may be able to discern, to understand the things that you want us to understand and to discover in you. Lord, may we use this time, may we use these remaining times, O oh Lord, fully to equip us, to equip others as well, O oh Lord, to share your blessings, to share your love, to share the gift of salvation given by you to all people in whom we can reach, O oh Lord. Lord, bless us. Lord, help us. Lord, enlighten us continually that we may be able to do such thing, O oh Lord. And as my brother will continue this prayer, hear our prayers, O oh Lord. Father, I am so touched by the Holy Spirit, Lord. You work in so strange ways, Lord. Very strange that we could not understand what you want us to do. But as piece by piece come together, making us one, we know what your intentions are, Lord. So, Father, I pray, Lord, that each one of us here right now, kneeling, praying to you, Lord, that we may be a light into the nation, Lord. We might not know what your reasons are, but you gave us a clear vision on what to do, Lord. And we also thank you, Lord, dear Father, for another experience you gave to our messenger, Lord, Pastor Don, that you gave him this mission to do. And also, it's also our mission to spread to others, Lord, on what we know about Jesus. So, Father, fill us. No, overflow us with the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, that we may be able to share to others what we have learned, Lord. And yes, Lord, on how we share to others when we are excited about something, Help us to have also that feeling, Lord, to share with others about Christ, Lord. Even though that we get discouraged, but help us, Lord, that this is not only one person that will get us discouraged, but there's a lot of people who are willing to accept about you, Lord. So please, give us the power of the Holy Spirit that we may be able to share to others, Lord. Amen. Before I pray... Uh, here in the Philippines, do you sing the song, Have Thine Own Way, Lord? Do you have that song? Uh, as I am praying, if we can have a couple of you that love to sing, just come up beside my sister and brother here that can lead us in that song right after I pray, okay? So if there's a couple of you that know the song well and can just sing, if there's somebody that can go to the piano and play uh, that song, Have Thine Own Way, just come right up here beside my sister. There's a little bit of room. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go to that song just in a moment. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, this morning I wept before your throne thinking I would be home. But for such a time as this, this is to be my home. Whether it's a few days, a few weeks, uh, longer, I do not know. It's not my business to know. It's a joy to be here tonight. And I have rest in my heart and peace to be here because this is where you've called me to be for this time. God, I'm surrounded by many students, staff and faculty, who also are moved in their heart to be home. But for now, this is our home. God, while the world around us, beyond the walls of this campus, is full of fear tonight, we choose to be full of faith in the living God, Christ Jesus. While the world is, is worried and fretting and afraid and, 
and thinking about how can we be more secure, this is the time for this beautiful campus, AUP, to rise up and go on the offensive, boldly championing personal revival with Jesus Christ. Every powerful revival, the most powerful revivals down through time, were never led by people my age that I know of. Most of the time, it's on campuses, university campuses, where the Spirit of God would maybe use someone like me to call, but then it's when the Spirit of God comes upon the students, the young people, when, when older people like me equip them and encourage them, but when they rise up, that the revival goes on with an intensity that the church desperately needs now. So God, I cry out to you in Jesus' name. Pour out your spirit like a river on the students here. As they go back to their dorms in a few minutes and back to their, their homes, their, their rooms, wherever they are on this campus, help them to gather the names swiftly tonight before they study. Get them on paper. Bring them in the morning. We will cry out to you, God, tomorrow for every name that they bring back. We will ask you, to do your beautiful work of blessing each name in the name of Jesus, blessing them with your love, calling them with your love while there's still time. We will be asking that you'll free your people on the list, that you'll ignite your people, and that you'll send your people. So this is what we will do. I'm asking that you will bless the faculty and staff on this site, bless the church members watching around the world, and those right here in this mission of the Cavite mission. God, in the next seven days, as we focus in the early morning on the call of Elijah, and then as we go through the day, by your grace, we'll be the voice of Elijah first on this campus. And in the evening, when we're off of work, when we have a pause for studies before we have to be back in our dorms, we will go out in Jesus' name to every room and every home, and we'll just go out in your name to call and say, can we come and pray with you? because we want to see you come again soon. We want to go home, God, not to our home in Canada or our home in the Philippines, ultimately. Yes, we want to be in our homes tonight, but we want to be home in heaven all together forever. None of this crazy separation that all of us are facing in this room tonight. We long for that day. And so let this be a start the next seven days of being ready for that day. And God, I close by saying, after these seven days of prayer ahead of us, I ask that during these seven days that you will set the stage for the students, the faculty, and staff on this site to be a voice across this mission, across this nation, and across this world in a way unprecedented, in a way that no one can get the glory but Jesus Christ, in a way where people will say, the only way that AUP could have done what they did next is because Jesus showed up through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the only way. And God, now we sing the song, Have Thine Own Way. Forgive me, forgive us in this room when we've tried to have our own way. As we sing this song out, we, it's a prayer. It's a prayer around the world. Help us to, to, to cry out to you, God, have your way, not our way, because your way is better. In Jesus' name, we're praying. Let's just sing with our heads bowed. If I, do I have any singers here that know that can, that can sing that song? Anybody here can help us? Okay. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Bless you and keep you, and have a good night. See you at 6.30 a.m. if you dare.
So again, we would like to invite everyone for our 6.30 morning United Prayer and Bible Study at COD, uh, the amphitheater of near COD building. So 6.30 a.m. Tomorrow. See you tomorrow.